Welcome to Bitter Reality Brewing. Today we're talking about ways to carbonate in a keg. Six different ways you can carbonate your beer in a keg. Don't forget, like, subscribe, keep sharing, huge support it. Definitely appreciate it. Brew, brewing America, got my muffin top. Got my first love brewing red amber or ramble the rye. Ramble on rye, sorry, I'm finishing the can so you know. Been a long day. I've done a couple videos on things, and I just did one on Blickman's Quick Carb, or a kind of a clone version of a quick carbonation system where you can carbonate your beer. If it's a gallon, you're talking 10 minutes. If it's an entire five gallons, 40 minutes to maybe an hour. So what I want to talk about here is there's six different ways that I know, and maybe you know if you know another way, throw it in the comments. Always looking to know more information. That's one of the big things I love about home brewing. I'm always learning. If I wasn't learning, I probably wouldn't enjoy it quite as much, but I'm always learning. We're gonna go over the first two right away that almost everybody who's ever gotten into kegging knows. Number one, you take your keg, you drop it in so it's cold crashing, you put the CO2, you crank it to where you want it to be, and you leave it there for a week and a half, two weeks. And then you take the first little bit, which I don't even hook up my liquid right away because I know it's not gonna be carbonated but then I hook up my liquid. If you have yours pre-hooked up, that's fine. Pull that first little bit off because it's not gonna be carbonated. Then check it and go, hey, it's greater. and eh, it needs more time. Number two, this one, I don't understand how people do it. I just truly do not understand how you do it and get it perfect. Is corn sugar. Yes, you can do corn sugar to your beer in a keg. And I know everybody's thinking, well, it's really easy. That's not hard. You just put it in the calculator, you measure it, it's not hard. Here's what I don't understand. And this is the part I don't understand is that if I got a six gallon carboy and I'm like, okay, right about here, I'm right at five gallons. Exactly. Well, now I got to deduct the trub. <sighs> yeah. Your corn sugar, you got to be pretty precise or you're going to over carbonate or under carbonate. So that's something to be aware of. And then when you put the CO2 on it, I guess you can adjust for it, but it's hard to measure it with trub in there. And you know, now if you move it to a secondary and you're measuring it, that's fine. But now you got a chance to expose it to more air, which is the whole reason I keg is to, well, I won't say the whole reason. One of the big reasons I keg is to avoid oxygen after my yeast makes beer because I made wort. Number three, and this is one somebody recently asked me to go over and I used to like it, but over time I've learned I hate it. And you know, you're like, what? Right here, and then that's already falling apart because I just stuck it together because I was using it for something else. It's a corny keg lid with an air inlet in the middle and a CO2 or it can be anything. It's an aeration stone at the end, okay? So it sits in the bottom of the keg. How you work this system is that you put this in, close it up, you cold crash it. When you're ready to start putting the CO2 on, you put it on here and you start cranking it up a couple PSI's at a time and you give it, after about two PSI, you give it time. It's gonna make little bubbles. You bring it up a little more and you bring it up a little more and you bring it up a little more and there's different recommendations out there on the net based on who's talking about it. Eventually you're gonna get up to, let's say you're trying for 12 PSI. You're gonna get up around 13, 14 PSI. Then what they tell you to do is to purge and purge and purge and let it pressurize again and an hour later, do it again, purge it a few times, let it fill up, purge it again. And you do this like ridiculous amount of times. Here's the problem with that, especially if you're doing an IPA or a pale ale, you're doing what they call CO2 washing. CO2 washing means that you're pumping so much air through and out and back in and through and out and then more CO2 and through and out. You're pulling out all the aromas or at least you're pulling out a lot of aroma. So if you have a really hoppy IPA, it may still be bitter. It may still have a hint of a smell. It may still have good flavor, but it's not gonna have nearly the aroma it did had you not used one of these carving systems. Now, if you're doing something that has almost no aroma, like Budweiser, or maybe a mild pale ale, or I really can't think of much, a stout. Some stouts don't have much of an aroma. Then yeah, great, you know, go for it. That's the reason I quit using this system. I still have this piece and I use this piece for aerating wort that I'm trying to ferment. And I just don't use this anymore. I have it. It is available if I want to talk about it, if I want to try to use it, but I don't want to wash 
my wart or my beer, should I say, wash my beer by doing a CO2 washing. I do not recommend doing the corny keg with aeration stone on that. I just I can't with good conscience because I've tried it, I've used it, and I was having problems with some of my IPAs when I first started doing it. It just had no aroma. And I didn't realize I was the cause of that. So I don't recommend it. Number four, and this is extremely common, this is what I've been doing for quite a while now actually, is I crank my CO2 up to about 30, 35, rarely 40. Some people go as high as 40. I do 30, sometimes 35 but you leave it there for two and a half, three, usually three to four days on average, but I've heard people at 40 PSI tell me the next day or two days later, it's fine. And what'll happen is you're putting so much CO2 pressure on it, it actually helps to push the CO2 into suspension and then you ease it off down to where it needs to be and it's either perfect, it needs a little bit more, or it's a little overcarbonated. And I'll tell you how to fix the overcarbonation after we talk about number five. Number five is the same basic principle. What you're doing is you're gonna crank it up to 30 to 40 PSI, but you're gonna shake the living hell out of that keg. You take it, preferably cold, it's gonna do better cold. You get it to about 30 to 40 PSI, you disconnect everything, and you shake it, you get a good workout. I mean, you're lifting it, you're moving it, you're tossing it, just shake it and shake it. And what you're doing is you're agitating it. And you're helping to get the CO2 bubbles into suspension and something about suspension so that you understand keeping CO2 in suspension is that if you have a very thin beer that doesn't have a lot of proteins or other things floating around in there that the CO2 to, can, 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 can bind to, it may take a little more time, it may take a little more pressure, it may take a little more agitation. If you have a very dense beer, a thicker beer, the CO2 is actually going to get into suspension much easier, much faster, and stay in suspension. A great example is when we did the double raspberry golden blonde ale, I started carbonating that at 35 PSI. The next day, I put an imperial oyster stout in the keyser, and I started carbonating that at 35 PSI. Well, about three days later, this was not carbonated well enough. I waited four days. This was pretty close. I felt it needed another day or two. This was overcarbonated. It was a heavier beer, had more proteins going on, just a denser beer. And the CO2 stayed in suspension better. So, like I said, I was gonna tell you how to reduce overcarbonation. Now, first of all, on the one that you shook the hell out of it, that's gonna be so agitated. If you start pulling beer right away, it's gonna be like a froth city. Give it some time. Give it at least about an hour to settle down and then pull it nice and slow. Don't open wide open, just pull a little bit and check it. It still will be a little agitated. It still will be a little frothy, but if for some reason it is way over carbonated or any of the other ones previously we have talked about are way over carbonated or the one we're gonna talk about, number six is over carbonated. Okay, don't just purge the CO2, okay? And I just recently was in a forum and mentioned this to somebody. A lot of people were like, ah, oh, purge, 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 turn CO2 turn the CO2 off or disconnect the end. Stop applying pressure, stop. It's kind of like, I'm bleeding, I'm bleeding. Can you fix this? I'm still cutting myself. I'm still cut. You got to stop what the cause and then address the wound. So if it's overcarbonated, stop applying pressure and then release, release, release. I mean, I'll, I'll release it all the way to the point I can open it and it's not gonna explode. Give it a little bit, let it sit there for a little while maybe overnight if you have to, but probably just a couple hours. Put the CO2 back on, try it again, see how it is. You may need to pull two times because the first one you're gonna get what's in the pipe or the tubes. And remember, I just mentioned about CO2 washing. You don't wanna do a lot of that because you are going to be washing your beer per se with CO2. So you're gonna be pulling out some of those aromas. So hopefully you didn't overcarbonate too bad. Number six, and I have kind of a mess here from the last video I did. Hey, it's quick carbonation or Blickman has quick carb. So <clears throat> I will still probably do the 30 to 40 PSI occasionally on beers I'm not in a big rush for, but if I want to carbonate it right away and I don't mind a little extra mess that I got to clean up, keep your hoses short, of course, check out the video I did. I'll put a link up here to the quick carbonation system. But for 20 bucks, I can now carb an entire five gallon keg in under an hour. And the only additional cost for me or for you, should I say not for me, is that I already had this pump from a 
my transfer system, you've seen me do transfers all the time to avoid any kind of oxygen. Well, I already had that equipment. So all I needed was this. I had everything else. There are other parts you may need to buy. And if you're not mechanical or you have to buy everything, you might want to consider just buying that from Blickman if you decide you like it. If you don't want it and you know you just want the pump and you just want this, you can buy different parts and build what you want. Or maybe you don't want to do any of that. You like the whole corn sugar route, which corn sugar route, I forgot to mention, I would not cold crash it. Leave it out at whatever the temperature is that your yeast likes. So 68 to 72, if it's an ale yeast, most likely. Most likely, some are a little different. Quick yeast, a little warmer, but leave the corn sugar in there. Let it get up to where you think it is. Check it, maybe a little picnic tap or something. But you won't need that much CO2 except to push the beer through once it's already you know, moving or to keep it moving, should we say. So definitely something to be aware of. Once it's where about you want it, drop it on in the keyser, cold crash it, and the next day you should be good. But those are six different ways to carbonate a keg. You got your two weeks of pressure, you got your corn sugar at whatever the temperature is it needs to let the yeast kick back in. You got your aeration stone, not recommend it. That's number three, 30 to 40 PSI for three to four days. That's number four. That's the one I have been doing for a while. <coughs> 30 to 40 PSI, if you've got the muscles, or as my youngest son says, you've got the guns, shake the living hell out of it. You'll be good that night or the next morning. And either the quick carb system from Blickman or your own quick carbonation, do it yourself, as we say. But six easy ways to carbonate your beer in a keg. Thank you again for joining us here at Bitter Reality Brewing. Don't forget, like, subscribe, share, just keep sharing. I definitely appreciate it. It's huge and I definitely appreciate it. Thank you again.